In this ad for the Mobile One brand, I have 30 seconds to talk about driving, which might be what you're doing right now. Maybe you're in the car, you're free, you're in control, on an open road with an open calendar. Your mind is wandering, and you're going with it. Or maybe you're stuck at work, in meetings, or emails, or worse, meetings about emails. And if that's the case, there's only one question. Why? Mobile One, for the love of driving. Visit loveofdriving.us slash radio to learn more. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Strong themes and coarse language may apply. Welcome, everyone, to the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio theater. I'm Jack Ward, and although we're into the 17th year and the 16th season of the Sonic Society, this week we're going to talk about a 20th anniversary. Yes, indeed, in the 21st century. That is, that's a lot of dates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, David Alt, O toast of co-hosts. Oh. But before we get to that, maybe we should just have a little check-in. Anything new with you? Well, things seem to be opening up a little bit more over here. And uh, later on this month, we're going to have the first ghost walk around Ripon for almost 18 Ooh. months, which is going to be, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, That'd be great. But a co- a, about six weeks ago at the Equinox, um, I don't know if I talked about it on here before, but I did a 12-hour storytelling. I called it a narathon because it, it wow. felt like it. It would be. Yeah, so I started at 6 p.m. on Equinox Eve and was telling stories up until 6 a.m., on the equinox so that was uh, so were you doing this just for fun or did you actually have a purpose well it was mind? partially for fun um <laughs> <laughs> but yes there was there was a purpose about it one of the local tourist attractions uh, nearby is called stump cross caverns and it's a beautiful set of caves and a lovely couple that runs it and uh, due to everything that has happened over the last 12 to 14 months, the funding has dried up from government and they were having to sell off their prized VW camper van. Oh, no. And I thought in order to, to raise some awareness and hopefully raise some money for them, but also raise awareness for all of arts and culture across the country and indeed the world, the arts is being chronically underfunded. Uh, so that's I wanted easy. to, yes, do this, uh, do a 12-hour marathon. And oh, that's great. It was a lot of fun. So I had um, some classic stories and some newer stories and uh, just kept on going right the way through the night. That's amazing. When were you able to talk again after that? <laughs> Strangely enough, my voice was pretty fine afterwards. I, I was that's not great. expecting that at all. I wasn't expecting wow. not to have uh, yawned as much. I, I was expecting to be yawning all the way through, but... Uh, I think mm. the first one came about half past three in the morning. Wow, so that was that was pretty good. I, that's testament. Did you drink a lot of coffee? There was a, there was you... a fair amount of coffee involved. Yes, that that might have been one of the issues. Any, no illicit substances, or no, they no, weren't no, 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 they no. weren't injecting you with anything. <laughs> <keep you> going. <laughs> My body is a temple, Jack. <laughs> that's right, an experimental cocktail of yes. stuff. That yeah, no, none of that. That's great. No, I'm the same way. I, I'm I'm glad that you didn't have to do that. So, do you have plans on doing that again in the future? Well, who knows? Who knows? But you can find the uh, the whole twelve hours um, on my YouTube channel. So oh, great! People look out for that. And at some point, I'm going to go through and and mark which stories were done when. Mm. But otherwise, it's it's twelve hours of pretty much nonstop storytelling. Maybe we should get that on the audio fiction podcast that we have. That would be cool. Absolutely, yes. If you're interested, that yeah. would be a, a big special. We could drop it in as like a full length <laughs> uh, 12 hour podcast binge. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. So that's that's called the Mutual Book Club, by the way, for those people who haven't subscribed. Mm. We have two audio 
fiction podcast that I added earlier in April, I believe at the beginning of the month. And so each week we drop more stuff from right now. I believe you'll be able to listen to John Bell's from Bell's in the Bat Free, the Devil's Pinata novel, which he's yeah. so kindly allowed us to do it's chapter by chapter. Mm-hmm. First on Friday Follies, and now we've taken those and put them in the audio fiction podcast too, for those people who love to be read to. Mm. The other fiction one is Story Circle Theater, which is all kids stuff and fairy tales and Mm. fun things so there's a bunch of those that you'll be able to listen to as well i'm serious i think i would totally listen to that you know obviously in in segments Mm. (laughs) but i would i would love to listen to 12 hours of you doing your thing (laughs) and that would be very cool maybe we can put a little uh note at the beginning to tell people that I'm sure they could still donate to those folks. Absolutely, yes, yes. It, uh, the, the, the fundraiser is still open. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So we'll have the links for those as well in it. So yeah, that'll be something coming up in the future. That's great. Lots more uh, books yourselves that you're doing on your own and, and no sleep stuff. And- yep, yep. The the usual stuff. And I've got a new audio book to record. So uh, look out for that uh, coming out oh. on probably on my YouTube channel again. Um, nice. So just going to start getting a few things going. Cool. Fiction or nonfiction? You do a lot of nonfiction. I, I, yes, well. this, this is again nonfiction. But more on that story later. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> As I was saying just before we got on here, Halifax going through a little bit of a mini lockdown. Uh, but with the glorious antiseptic powers of radio, the Mutual Audio Building remains a place where we all can keep working together. It's awesome. It indeed is. <laughs> it's it's surprising how you've managed to sneak, sneak me across every every week. <laughs> That's true. Well, <laughs> if we didn't have that extra line off the channel, we'd be in real trouble. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it just zips along under the ocean all it's, the way to Nova Scotia. Great. It's great. Right. I mean, Elon Musk could learn a thing or two from the Mutual Audio Network. That's all. That's all yeah, I'm saying. We have the best audio engineers working <laughs> on physical <laughs> buildings yep. or such. We do have a YouTube as well, the Mutual YouTube. We should actually uh, trade YouTube links so I can connect you yeah, as well. Yeah. The Mutual website is going to be updated more. I've been working on it slowly in the background, but with all these you know stoppages and such at my Clark Kent job, it's been harder to do that. We're working towards MadCon virtual. July, the end of July, mm. a couple of days, probably a weekend where we'll do some virtual MadCon stuff mm-hmm. as we get ready for MadCon's live 2022. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look like anything's going to stop us this time. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Yes, touching Knock wood. on wood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Sonic Summerstock 2021. I'm sure hoping you're still interested in being our, our perennial summer, summer, uh, summer host <laughs> as we come in July and August. It's going to be weird because uh, I know that Pete Lutz he usually does like five or six things and I think he's limited to two or three this summer. Oh gosh, so wow. Others are going to have to pick up the pace and yes. start doing more <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> and the last uh, bit of news is uh, just a personal bit i just got accepted to do my master's so after all this time i'm going back to education this is going to be specifically for english as a second language educational masters so i'm really looking forward to it uh, yeah. I'm, I'm nervous it's been like 25 years 30 years since i've been in a, in a classroom as a student again yes. so I'm nervous i'm right now they're kind of mixing it between online and in person mm. not currently because of the lockdown but that's what they usually try to do mm. so i'm looking forward to it i'm going to try and get through this masters as quickly as possible because i have nothing else to do no so. no nothing at all <laughs> nothing at all jack <laughs> uh, yeah i had to laugh because um jeff billet had this brilliant idea he said we should get like the best of Bill Hallwig and, and start doing like the Bill Hallwig classic Renaissance stuff. And I'm just in there going, what a great idea. Who has time to do it? <laughs> because I don't <laughs> have time to do it. Yeah, I mean, with the with the amount of time that you have, I'm sure that at some point you're going to start recycling your old things and yes. then repackaging them as something new. It's it's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> Because coming down the pike, we have many many new shows and releases for Sonic Society and, and Sunday Showcase. But this week, we have a new release of my first produced script. It's almost as if I knew that that was coming. It yeah. is. It's amazing. You're so psychic <laughs> with a script in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> Shh, don't tell everyone. Um, <laughs> yes, and, and coming right up is Right Number Wrong Party, the 
Uh, th- th- there's got to be a mistake here. It says 20th anniversary? It is the 20th anniversary of the writing of the script. No. The actual play was produced but about 18 months later on. Mm. But yeah, the writing of the script, 20 years now. Wow. So. And that's, that's amazing. Produced by Lothar Tuppen and starring Jeff mm-hmm. Billard, Tanya Malievich, Austin Beach, Lothar Tuppen, Jan Dider, uh, John Bell, and Joshua Price. And it all begins right here on the Sonic Society. There is a land that's somewhere beyond the horizon. You may catch a glimpse of it when the sun sets, or in the moments before dawn. It's the twilight that flickers at the edge of imagination. Somewhere between reality and fantasy. It's the place where monsters roam, and portals to other worlds wait in the back of a closet and in the crevices of your mind. Welcome to the Shadowlands. Bennett Hadley is on a mission. After a stellar career as a hero rookie cop, he's realized the following ten years showed him instead as a hero with feet of clay. Feet that are about to get a lot of mileage. As he answers the ring of a phone in an empty booth down a street in the Shadowlands. You'd never answer the phone. I was about to hang up. Do you want this job or what? I... I... Look, never mind. Friggin' also acted up again. Makes me crazy. (laughs) I got everything in place for you. I know you just came into town and you... But I don't... (sighs) I got enough problems getting this job completed without you cutting me off every five minutes. This guy ain't gonna do himself, you know? I understand. Good. Then listen carefully. You just got in town, right? Yeah, right. Just arrived. Great. We're communicating now. See that? Simple juxtaposition of sender and receiver. Like a marriage. Give and take. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Give and take. Who's the target? I don't know yet. (laughs) I just broke the deal. First things first. Go to the Paranisos restaurant on Columbia and Lake. You'll find a table with a single carnation on it. Sit down. Be there in 20 minutes. Wait a minute. C- Columbia and what? Hello? Hello? Columbia and Blake? Hello? Hello? Hello, this is the operator. My name is Judy. How can I help you today? Operator, where did that last call come from? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what you the mean. The last call? The last call from this phone booth? I'm sorry, sir. I don't have that information. Is there something else I can do to help you? Damn it. Yes, you can. My name is Officer Bennett Hadley, my badge number is 42319, and I need to know the location of who was at the- I'm sorry, Officer Hadley, I do not have such information. Would you like to speak with my supervisor? Hell yes, I would. 
Uh, just, just a second. What is it? Hi, honey. I was just calling to see if you were on your way. Damn it, Sharon! I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, should I? Should should? Sir, sir, are you there? Which supervisor would you like? I forget it. <sighs> Sharon. Yes, honey. Look, uh, I'm in the middle of something right now. I didn't mean to make you mad. I- I'm not. I'm not. <sighs> I'm not mad. You just you just caught me at a bad time, okay? I'm I'm sorry. Don't 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 be sorry. Can I call you back? I've got to call the station house, okay? Okay. I won't be a moment. Okay. <sighs> and Sharon, honey. Yes. I love you. I know. I. I love you too. Okay. Bye. Come on, come on. Be there, damn it. Vice, Officer Parrish. Colin, it's me. You still there, thank God. Ben? Hey, what are you doing, partner? Running, stupid. I'm halfway towards Columbia. You need to do me a big favor. Slow down, old man. You sound like you're gonna have a heart attack. Get the map out from my desk. The city map. Yeah, do you, do you know which one? One sec. Come on, come on. Okay, I've got it. What now? Uh, look for streets intersecting with Columbia. Blake, a gate, stake, any street that sounds like that. That intersects with Columbia. Colin? Colin? Yes, yes. No Blake. Lake? Lake Street? Damn it, of course. Lake, where is it? What's all this about, Ben? Do you need help? Yes. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. I got it covered. Just, just, where is Lake Street? Well, where are you now? I, I don't know. Just a sec. Here, here. I'm at Blythe in Columbia. Did you get that? Yes, I did. Jeez, Bennett. What's going on? I, I'll tell you later. I've got to run. Just tell me. Where the hell is Lake? Fine, okay. Lake Street is about eight blocks east of you. If you want to rush, grab a cab and fill me in. I no time. It's gridlock here. I'll make it faster by foot. Thanks, Colin. I'll talk to you later. Oh, wait. Don't shut me out, Ben. Not like last time you... Hello? Sharon, honey, it's me. I, I'm sorry for being so short before. I just... Oh. It's okay, Bennett. I shouldn't have called you. If you told me once, you told me a thousand times that I shouldn't call you. It's all right. I'm just... I'm just into something here. I I found something. Work-related. I I just... I think... I don't know what's going to happen. Ben, why are you running? You're scaring me. Uh, don't be scared. I've just got to make a stop, and, and then I'll be home. Please hurry, Ben. Remember, you are going to meet me at the new house. Uh, I might be late. When will you know? I don't know. Sharon, do you ever get the feeling? Feeling? <laughs> what feeling, Bennett? I, I don't know. I, You know, that feeling that... That feeling that everything's about to change. That, that, that all the crap you surrounded yourself in and you, and you sunk yourself into, uh, up to your neck is going to be shoveled away at last and, and you'll be seen for who you are. Be seen. No, no, never mind. It, it doesn't matter. Look, I'll be there when I can. Okay, honey. Uh, I'll be on my cell doing errands. Just let me know when you want. Excuse me. Welcome to Paranisos. Are you dining alone today? N- no. I, well, I mean, yes, I, I guess. That, that. That is, is there a table for me? A table for you? Let me check. Uh, what is your name, sir? My name? See, si, your name. I, uh, I, I don't know. 
Uh, Scusi? Well, I mean, of course I know. I I just don't know what the name is reserved under. If if I could just look. There, right over there. Where? There. The the table with the flower, the the carnation. Ah, yes, the white the carnation. Eh, we had bets, the kitchen staff and I, as to whether or not the man would return towards the table. Man? How long has he been gone? Gone? Um, about a ten minutes or so. He asked for the phone. He made a call, and I suppose it was a business-related because he said he would be right the back. And then he left. He just left? Well, he asked me to place this flower in a vase on the table. <laughs> Bella, no? Yes, yes, it's it's beautiful. My my wife's favorite flower. Ah, wonderful. You are married. You must let us celebrate your anniversary sometime. We have a buffet lunch that is the toast of the city. Uh, sounds good. I'll I'll wait at the table for now. Of course, sir. This way. Here, I will get you a menu. Hey, thanks. Hey, just a minute. This envelope on the plate, is this yours? What? Oh, no, sir. It must have been left by the other man. I see. Hey, this other man, do you know what he looked like? See, si. kind of like you, sir. Uh, tall, dark, uh, very serious looking. Sure, yeah. Well, we're in serious business negotiations. Uh, don't worry, he, he left it for me. See, si. um, I will get to the menu for you now. Hmm. Hey, just place it on the table. I'll, I'll look at it in a minute. Sir, there's a call for you. For me? How? The gentleman on the phone said to pass the phone to the person at this table. That's all he said? The person at this table? Yes, sir. The table with the carnation. He did? Okay, well, where's the phone? It is, it's here, sir. Uh, I brought you the remote. Please just let me know when you're done. Okay, thanks. Uh, that will be all. Thank you. Of course, sir. Thank you. Yes? Good. You made it before they cleared the table. I was expecting to meet you here. Who told you that? I just told you to come. I said nothing about a meeting. Well, I just thought that... Don't. You came to do a job. Play this right, and the 70 grand will be yours. Screw it up, and we're all gonna get pissy with each other. Don't worry. You got the right guy. Look, here's the deal. We're not the only ones on this. I fix this stuff up, but I keep strictly hands off. That way, if things go bad, they don't know me, and you don't know me. That's why you go through channels. One phone call. You miss it, and you got no way to contact me unless you go through channels like before. And that takes days. You got it? Capiche. Great. You find the envelope? Sure, just half under the plate. Good. And inside it you found the key? Yeah, it was in the paper. Good. Now go to the train station at Bradley. When? Right now. See the number on the key? Yeah, yeah. 2407. That's the box it fits. Go there and get the package in the box. In 40 minutes, I'll call you on the third phone on the east end of the station. Same floor as the box. Got it? 40 minutes. Box at Bradley Station. Got it. Can I meet you there? You ain't listening. We don't meet. Not face to face, leastways. Not before the contract is expired. Okay. Third phone on the... East End. East End. I gotcha. Are you gonna tell me who now? Are you ready to order, sir? Actually, I'm sorry. I, I have to go. That was just my uh, dinner companion, and he's had a problem. Nothing is serious, I hope, sir. <laughs> Me too. But it's sounding more serious all the time. Time, time, time. Southbound. 
Southbound train arriving on platform six. Southbound train arriving on platform six. Parrish. Colin, it's me again. Christ, you had me worried. I didn't hear from you and you wouldn't answer yourself. I phoned you home to find out if you got back. Ah, Jesus, Colin, why'd you do that? I told you. You wouldn't answer your cell and I wondered if you needed backup. That must have been the subway. It, it kills the signal. I had to take it to get to Bradley Station. Train station? What are you doing there? Hey, never mind that. I need you to get a trace going. Ah, crap. What? Ah, Sharon called me twice. My call display has her cell and our home number on it. What'd you do, panic her? You know me better than that, Ben. She was already worried. She said you're not yourself. And I have to agree with her. Damn it. Damn it. Now I have to call her back and calm her down. I don't have time for this shit. Why? What's going on, Ben? I'm supposed to be a partner. I should have been home two hours ago, but you got me sitting here by my desk, wondering just what the hell is going on. I need you to do a trace on... 555-8736. Ben, you know I trust you. But I can't just get a trace without knowing what's going on. Suppose the sergeant comes in. What am I supposed to tell him? Look, I got five minutes, and I haven't even gotten to the locker yet. Locker? What locker? Damn it, Ben. Don't make me keep asking. Okay, okay, Colin. I'll tell you everything. But let me call you back after the trace. Just tell the sergeant you're waiting for me to report in. I'll be like... 15 minutes. Okay? Colin? Okay? Fine, Ben. Fine. Okay. I'll get the phone traced. Win. Just have the operators monitor it for the next 10 minutes or so. And get me a location. Okay? Okay, Ben. 15 minutes. You call back. I'll be waiting to hear all Thanks, this. Thanks, Colin. I gotta run now. I gotta get to the locker. Okay. I'll get the trace. Thanks, partner. Just be careful, Ben. <laughs> you sound like my wife. Northbound train arriving on platform 7. Northbound train arriving on platform 7. 2403-0406-07. Okay. Key. Damn it. Fit in the lock. Okay, it's time. I've got the case. Ring, damn you, ring. No, 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 no. Damn it, you said third phone on the east side, not the fourth. That's not, uh, that can't be my call. Crap. Hello? I almost hung up. Well, you said the third phone. This is the fourth. What is this, grade school? <laughs> third, fourth, uh, what difference does it make? It's just, well, I... It doesn't, I, I guess. They told me you were steady. You're not getting butterflies or some crap like that, are you? No, no, no. No butterflies. Just... The other phone threw me, that's all. Are you sure? Because I was told I was getting the professional. No butterflies. I got the case. Inside, you'll find the piece. With the silencer attached. I know your preference for rifles, but this one has to be up close and personal. Uh, uh, up close. Got it. <clears throat> no way you'll have the room for a sniper rifle. No other view. You gotta be within spitting distance. Don't worry. The ammo has more than enough. You empty the clip, you walk away, and take yourself a nice vacation. Yeah, right, right, in and out. Look, so tell me, who and where? Don't you want to know where your money is? Well, yeah, sure, I, I, mean, I just figured that... Look, you've done aces so far, and as we agreed, you get your half now, and the other after the job. <phone rings> what is that? What? Oh, ah, it's nothing, it's just someone's cell phone or something. Okay, trains and people. They both get you coming and going, don't they? Coming and going. Friggin' right. Go to the dumpster at the Eastwich Mall. 
There's a used carton of Luckies in there. You'll find a package wrapped up. Your first payment is there, and your target's address. Wait, how will I contact you after this for the last half? Don't worry. I'll find you. And complete the payment in full. Good luck, Ace. Damn it, Sharon. What'd you want? Hello, Ben? Is that you? Of course it's me. You've called me three times. Who else would be calling your cell phone at this time? Christ, it's almost 9.30. Please don't be angry, honey. I was worried. You sound so agitated. Is something going on? Is something wrong? No, no. Jeez. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, love. I I know we've planned for this at the new place, but something important's come up. Can, can we see it tomorrow? By the time I get home... It's uh, okay, Ben. Don't worry. The realtor gave me the keys for 24 hours. We can go tomorrow at lunch if you'd like. Oh, that would be good. I, I'm, I'm sorry, baby. No. I'm sorry. You've had a bad day. I'll have something waiting for you when you come home. Are, are you coming home now? I've got just one more thing to do, and then I'll be home. Don't wait up for me. It's no trouble, Ben. It'll take me a half an hour to drive home from this new house. You'll love it. Staircase in the front as soon as you enter, wood floors, everything is perfect. Honey, that's someone on the other line. Can, can you wait a minute? Okay. So, our... Hello? What gives, partner? I thought you were going to call back. There never was any traffic on that line. Look, Carl, I got my wife on the other line. Can you, can you just wait a minute? <sighs> sure, man. Sharon, I, I've got to go. Okay, honey, I'll see you when you get home. I, I don't wait up. I, I'll probably be late, and, and you've got to work tomorrow. Ben? What? You're sure everything is okay? Yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Why do you ask? I, I don't know. I just get this feeling. What kind of feeling? Ben, just just be careful, okay? Aren't I always? Just, just be extra careful tonight, please. Yeah, sure, sure. Don't worry. I'll, I'll see you soon enough. Just... Just get home and, and get some rest, okay? I love you, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I know. Bye. Goodbye, Ben. Hey, sorry for the wait. Not a problem, man. Your wife comes first, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are certainly my partner. What do you mean? Well, here you are one minute, all stressed out about some clandestine operation. And the next, you're whistling to the ladies passing by. It's not a lady. Huh. Even better. Did I tell you about the girl I met the other night? I mean, this whore picked me up. All 240 pounds of you? She must have been off the Russian steps. <laughs> no, seriously. I've never had a woman so into it. <laughs> Look, it, it wasn't a woman. Someone has just shown me some, uh, some mighty impressive merchandise. Merchandise? Stolen? Drugs? What do you got, partner? I don't know quite yet. Don't know or aren't telling. Come on, Ben, let me in. We've been partners for six years. You taught me everything I know about the Force. We've always backed each other up. Hell, I even took those damn anger management courses with you. It's not that. It's not that. It's just I don't want to be wrong this time. And and when I get it right, I'll, I'll bring you in. I promise, Colin, okay? If you say so, I still think you should clue me in. Do you still want that phone tapped? We got nothing on it. No, no, don't bother. I, it was the wrong phone, and, and don't worry. I don't need you coming in to watch my back quite yet. That's what we do, Ben. We protect our own, right? Serve and protect. Hey, this ain't about that crack house thing, is it? No, no, it's not. I mean, okay. Well, maybe it is. I, I just know... What? Know what, Ben? Look, I gotta go. I gotta get to the mall. Okay, Bennett. Fine. No, no, I, I don't mean that. I, I, I mean, if I had you tap in one phone and he called from another... Who called from another? Then he may be watching me. He he, he may be watching me right now. I, I've got to go. Who may be watching you? Ben. Ben? That's it. I, I just missed him at the restaurant. And then I sit down, and, and the phone's right there. And, 
And then he tells me the third phone, and it's the fourth one. That bastard's tailing me. He could be watching me right now. Ben. 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 Four seven two. Okay, now still be there. Parish. Colin. Ben. Jeez, I wait thirty minutes for you to call back or answer your phone, and the one time you get back to me, I'm in the John. I had to make sure I wasn't being followed. Followed? By who? So I, I jumped on a bus to get here. Where the hell are you? Here. The mall. Eastwich Mall. What are you doing there? It's my last pickup before it goes down. <sighs> what goes down, Ben? What the hell is happening? I think I'm holding $30,000 in my hand. Can you believe it, Colin? $30,000. All in 50s, 100s, even $1,000 bills. Where did you get it from, Ben? <laughs> the dumpster. Where else? Ben, you're really scaring me, man. Oh, I only half believe this wasn't a crock. But this clinches it, you see? I can just go there, stop it all, stop it cold, and this will change it all around. Ben, I'm pleading with you. Tell me what the hell's going on. Oh, you were right, Colin. This is about the crack house, and about that truck full of guns, and, and all the penny ante shit we've been nailed on before. Ben, partner, it's not your fault. We had good information that turned out to be bad busts. You can't blame yourself. Can't I? Can't I, Colin? I was the wonder kid. I was the rookie going places. Remember that? You may not have been partnered with me, but you do remember the bank robbery. And guys are still talking about it, fresh out of the academy. You stopped it all, Ben. You did. No one blames you for the crap that happened afterwards. Like I said, they were just bad busts. Shit happens. You gotta... You gotta let go. Colin, the only thing I gotta do is go to 475 Maybush Crescent. Maybush? What's there? Redemption, partner. A new beginning. And I want you to be there. It's just two blocks away from here. By the time you get here, it'll be all over. What will be? Come on, Ben. What will all be over? 475 Maybush. Gotta run, Colin. Be there. Damn it, Ben. What's... Four forty one Maybush, four forty five, four seventy three. Damn it, Dark Street can't see. Damn, don't be dead, damn it, don't be dead. Freeze. Well? He's dead. Are you sure? It's so damn dark in here. Flip the switch by your left there. Perfect. I tripped the breaker on the first floor. Oh, yep. He's gone all right. Poor bastard. <laughs> yes, poor bastard. One shot right through the forehead. Amazing what a woman can do when properly motivated. And you'd be surprised at how many shooting ranges are open for a lunch break. Well, I still don't know why you wanted me to move them all around town like that. Why all the fuss? I mean, for the 35 grand, I could have just shot him leaving the station. No, then he would have been the martyr he always wanted. There's your money. It's still on him. With the stink of the garbage you found it in. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta admit, it was kind of fun. Kind of like one of them, you know, murder mystery dinner theater things. 
And of course, the kicker <laughs> is the target pays me for his own demise. We won't be needing the down payment for this house anymore. I never wanted to move anyway. Just out of curiosity. And by all means, you don't have to tell me anything. But why do it like this? Why do it at all? Was he really that bad? <laughs> that bad. <laughs> that bad. <laughs> Ever notice how we can minimize the greatest injuries and maximize the weakest of slights? The ability to place all of life in a contrast. My mother used to say it wasn't that bad. Even when she went to bed with her eyes blackened or her fine china broken, it wasn't that bad. That my father lashed us so badly with his belt when he was drunk that we had welts from the buckle? Or that my brother drowned because he struggled too much in the tub when my dad was teaching him a lesson about holding his breath? Not that bad. I mean, not third world country bad. Or Nazi concentration camp bad. Hell no. Not that bad at all. I mean, look at what kind of person it's made me today. <laughs> uh, do you believe in fate, Mr. Kitterstein? Fate? Yes. Not quite destiny, but fate. In the old ways where your future is not only written, but you're bound to commit the same mistakes and errors until you reach this moment of truth, where you either escape it, or circles of fate swallows you whole. I kind of always figured people made their own luck. Look, you don't gotta tell me anything. Yes, I can see how someone in your line of work might feel that way. Who else do I have to talk to? This is my chance. And I think after all these years, it's time I got it off my chest. Don't forget the bug. Right. Smart thinking. That little transmitter in his cell phone? Ha! <laughs> I could hear everything. He was practically wedded to it. Here. Put this in his pocket. What? What's this? Call it a little protection. Holy crap, it's you! And who's the other guy? That's Parrish. You mean your husband's partner? Yep, yeah, that's him. A little risque, ain't it? I mean, if I found a picture of my wife naked doing this to my partner... And you had a temper? Yeah, it would make me crazy jealous. Ah, Jesus, you're cold. You get used to it. When your heart's been living in the Arctic long enough. See, Bennett told me about Parrish's weakness for girls. I found the fat bastard out at a bar, where Ben told me he frequently picked up women. So you dolled yourself up and picked him up instead. <laughs> it, it, your husband said they've been partners for years, and, and you've never met him. That's what it's like with a wife beater, Mr. Kitterstein. They have this thing about control and jealousy. So you screw his partner, take this candid photo of the intimate occasion. <laughs> and plant it on Ben's body. So when the cops come, they see him dead by your gun, with his partner's picture of you in his pocket. And the hysterical wife, who's already called 911. And if they check the phone records and all of our phones, they'll discover several calls to Ben from me. And back as well as a call from his partner to me, and, of course, several conversations between the two of them. But Parrish could talk. Tell them what he knows. What's he going to say? What does he know about what Ben was doing? Is he going to say he wasn't sleeping with his wife? They'd expect that. Cops protect their own, don't they? If push comes to shove, I'll tell them we slept together. That Ben drove me to it, his temper, the way he kept me in fear. They'll hush the whole thing up. Better to put it down as self-defense and not look further. Or ruin the rep of Parrish and the dead hero cop. He must have hurt you bad. Your concern is appreciated, Mr. Kitterstein. But he won't be hurting anyone ever again. Parrish knew about Ben's abuse. They all did. I reported him half a dozen times. 
You can understand, after my upbringing, I wasn't going to end up like my mother. Christ, a half dozen times he beat you? No, I reported him a half a dozen times. Do you know what it's like to wait at the front door every night, not knowing if you're going to be struck down to the ground or not? I've had four broken bones over the past five years. This isn't murder, Mr. Kitterstein. It's health insurance. Why didn't the cops do anything? Rule number one, police protect their own. Now get out. I've got a phone call to make, and it needs to be done before Paris shows up. He's in for a big surprise. You, um, you sure you're going to be okay? Of course, Mr. Kitterstein. <laughs> Why would I be anything but? No reason. Just, uh, just be well, Mrs. Hadley. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I just shot my husband. Send an ambulance. He's dying. Oh, God. Hurry. <laughs> Nine one one operator, what is the nature of your emergency? Oh god. Oh god, oh god, I think I just shot my husband. Send an ambulance. He's dying, oh god. <laughs> Hurry! Uh, calm down, ma'am. What's your name? Sharon Hadley. I didn't know. I didn't know. This is my husband. He's on the floor. Are you all right, Sharon? I'm sending an ambulance right away. Where are you? I'm, I've had 475 Maybers Crescent. It's so dark. He had a gun. I think he tried to kill me. He had a gun. And I shot. Oh, please hurry. He's, please, he's not breathing. I can't please, please. I can't please, please. He was crazy. <laughs> he was so angry. He Life is made of moments that create the ribbons and strings that represent the composite of our time on Earth. But for every life, there's a time when you reach the end of your rope. When the call comes for each of us, will we be ready to answer it? And will it come collect? For Sharon Hadley, this call was free. Compliments of the Shadowlands. This 20th anniversary production of Right Number Wrong Party was created and written by Jack J. Ward with sound design, direction, and mastering by Lothar Tuppen. Bennett Hadley was played by Jeff Billard. Mr. Kitterstein was performed by Lothar Tuppen. Austin Beach played Colin Parrish. And Sharon Hadley was played by Tanya Milojevich. Janet Deiter was the operator named Judy. Waiter number one was played by John Bell. Waiter number two was played by Joshua Price. And Angela Young was the 911 operator. The Shadowlands theme music was created by Christopher Moreno. Additional music provided by the Free Sound Project. Sound effects provided by Jack J. Ward, Lothar Tuppen, and the Free Sound Project. Shadowlands Theater is a work of fiction. All dramatic material within is for entertainment purposes only. Any references to real events, businesses, or locales are intended only to give the fiction a sense of reality and authenticity, and not to describe any actual conduct. Any character's resemblance to an actual person, either living or dead, is entirely coincidental. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
And that's this week's show. Please check the show notes for links for Electric Vicuna Productions at sonicsociety.org if you've never been there before, and if so, why not? <laughs> Please join us next week as we get another earworm or two to listen to. Ooh, a clue, a clue. Until then, <laughs> I'm David Alt. Have a lovely day. And I'm Jack Ward. Bye now. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production.